Hello, hello. This is bright and early. I'm wearing my old man's reading glasses. I've made some more coffee and I'm going to go through the amazing Laravel bootcamp tutorial with Inertia and React. And consider I've got some, I don't have experience in Laravel, but I've done a lot of learning in the last few weeks. And so I want to go through it as a JavaScript front-end developer that works a lot with React. And I want to kind of, because I understand what the tutorial does, I want to kind of comment as I go through all the good stuff that's happening. So let's get right into it. Yes, I had four coffees already. <laughs> so here I am, Laravel Bootcamp, which is bootcamp.laravel.com. This is a really nicely designed page where you can choose your adventure with Blade. So Blade is like the default de facto templating language for Laravel. It's very, very good, very simple. If you've used Twig or some sort of like server-side template language, that's something like this. But what we want to do here is use a JavaScript in Inertia and React because this is the fun part where you can transfer a lot of dev skills from the React Node.js land into uh, Laravel straight away. We're going to use React. All right, so we're going to start from complete scratch. So we're going to use Composer, which is a package manager for PHP, just like NPM is for the Node and JavaScript ecosystem. So I'm going to copy that task. I'm going to try to draw some parallels between uh, Node, JavaScript, and PHP. So here, uh, if I paste the command Composer Create Project, Think of it when you do npx create next app. Uh, this is basically like kicking off a boilerplate startup that's going to install some templates and then download some packages, but the equivalent in the PHP world. So let's run that. You can see it creates this uh, new project and installs Laravel and a bunch of other dependencies. All right, so that's step one done. And then we're going to go into this Chirper project and go PHP artisan serve, which is going to start the dev server. So let's CD into Chirper and open this in VS Code. PHP devs might scream at me that I should use PHP Storm. Uh, for now, I'm going to use uh, VS Code and I have some extensions added that make life a little bit better with PHP, actually quite a lot better. All right, let's go in Zen mode and I'll open the sidebar and the terminal and I will run PHP artisan serve and it's going to start the server on this port and if I open this, I will be greeted with this default Laravel start page. So far, so good. Yes, this is what we have. And then we're going to use SQLite or SQLite um, so we don't have to set up MySQL database. So I'm going to go in the .n file and we're going to remove the database stuff and just change the connection to SQLite. So let's go to .env and you can see we have a lot of uh, environment variables set for things like emails, AWS buckets, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna find the DB stuff and we can remove all of that. Let's comment it out. And here I will change that to SQL Lite. I do think when you do that, you need to create a, a database file, but because I've already gone through the bootcamp, I know that it's going to actually automatically offer to create that in the next step. Right, we're going to skip installation via Docker. Next step is going to install Laravel Breeze. And Breeze is a super, super cool starting point boilerplate that gives you authentication, account creation, password reset, delete, all the, the stuff around user accounts. And it also gives you a nice layout for a dashboard starter. So you can see that Breeze comes in a lot of flavors. It comes with the Blade templates or Vue, React, Inertia. Here we want React, so I'm going to require the Composer package. Again, remember, like NPM. And I'm going to require Laravel Breeze, and then we'll install the React version. So I'll keep this uh, server running, and I'll open another terminal where I go Composer require Laravel Breeze dash dash dev. And then I can install that package with the React flavor, just like that. So this is going to pivot us slightly in the front-end world and the NPM world because it installs stuff like React. So you can see now it's talking about nodes, dependencies. Uh, you may have noticed that it's using Vite under the hood right there. So we're getting closer to home uh, as JavaScript developers. All right, and so now we can run NPM run dev. And what this is going to do is start 
hot reloading our front end. Every time we change something, the local host port 800 that we've started with PHP Artisan Serve is going to refresh. Uh, so if we change stuff, it's going to hot reload the page. So let's try that. npm run dev. And it technically tells you that this provides hot module replacement, but you still have to visit um, your app at the other port, which is the 8000, which is this one. So now check this out. If I refresh this page, we have the exact same page, but on the top right, this is Laravel Breeze scaffolding. It gave us a nice login page, but also a register page where you can create a new account. And this is all wired up with the database and authentication and user accounts and all the good stuff. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go through the tutorial. You can see that actually before things are wired up, we need to migrate our database with PHP Artisan migrate. So when you run the migrate command, it runs the migrations in database migration. So you can see we have these uh, migrations created by Laravel Breeze. So we have this create user that's going to create a user account with a name, email, email verification, password, and all the good stuff. And so when we run PHP artisan migrate, it's going to run and create all these tables for passwords, personal access tokens, and all that stuff. So let's open a third terminal, which I'll use to run commands. And here I'll go PHP artisan migrate. And by the way, there's tons of these PHP artisan commands. Uh, I think if you run dash dash help, you get a list of all the things you do. Definitely check it out. This is how Laravel scaffolds a lot of stuff. If you, you'll see in the tutorial, if you want to create a model or a migration or a factory or a policy or all this stuff that Laravel provides, there's a PHP make something, and then it generates all the boilerplate, which is really, really, really nice. So let's migrate our database. That's what I meant before. See, it says, hey, uh, there is no database file. Do you want to create? Yes, please. And now it's creating that database and ran the migrations. So we have this new database.sqlite file. Uh, this is not really meant to read in a code editor because it's going to look very, very odd. But we can use a tool called Table Plus, which is free on Mac and Windows, maybe, I'm not sure. And we're going to be able to visualize our database. Here I have Table Plus. I'll just start a new connection so you can see how it works from start. So you have all these different database uh, drivers. I'm going to use SQLite here, create. And what we need to do is give it a name. Let's go Laravel YouTube Boot. Camp, and I'm going to find the database file. So I am currently in sites, chirper. So then inside database, there should be this file here, which is our database. So let's connect to that. Uh, I think it works. And look at this. We have a user table with the exact fields that were set in our migration for the user model here. And as the tutorial progresses, we're going to refer to this to see what's happening in our database. All right, so now that we've migrated that database, believe it or not, we have a fully functioning authentication system where we can create accounts, manage accounts, delete accounts, etc. So let's go and do that. And we're going to create an account and log in. And I just want to pause here because this step is usually where all my site projects just flop and I abandon them. I literally, every single time I try to build a site project on the weekend with Node.js, I get stuck at the authentication layer and creating a proper user creation and password reset flow. Uh, it's a lot of work. I always get confused with the cookies and the sessions. And I have this idea of a project and I never get to actually start this because I get stuck in the authentication scaffolding. Now I know there's helper tools like NextAuth and all this stuff, but having this set up like this, like I'm going to show you, is incredible for me. It lets me skip all that and actually build what I'm trying to build instead of the scaffolding infrastructure to be able to build it. Yes, I talk a lot, but I had a lot of coffee. <laughs> Let's keep going.